In today's video, we'll show you how you can rename hosts. Okay, so um, renaming hosts sounds easy, but it's more complex than you might think. Yes, it is. Um, well, the renaming of hosts in ChickenK is, uh, is possible, but it's a complex operation because the host name is used as a key in many situations. So it's used in log files, in historic data, in, in the metrics data, and so on. So you of, of course, you could simply remove a host and add it with a new name, but then you lose all your continuity. So what we want to do is rename host in a way that uh, keeps the continuity. So basically, we change not only the future, but also uh, the past. And that's something Check and K can do, and we'll show you how this is actually done. Right, so exactly. Robin is with me today again. So hello, Robin. And yeah, let's maybe uh, start with a simple example of renaming one single host. Yeah, I think that sounds reasonable for starters. All right, so now we are back in our uh, demo site and we are going to navigate through the first host. So we prepared some examples to showcase how one can rename hosts. Um, and here we got our first example. It's a single host, um, typical setup, and you see it has kind of a weird name. So we want to rename that host and make sure it's uh, named properly. So we're going to open the host object. Then we navigate to host and we can say rename here. So this is the this is what Matthias mentioned earlier, the proper way to rename a host. I mean, uh, uh, if you go back uh, one step, uh, you will see that this field is not long an input field. The host name is fixed. You cannot edit the name here. Right, exactly. So With other values, the IP address, you could just change it on the fly, save. Yeah, you can change a anything, just not the host name. Yeah, so right because okay. it's the key identifier and that's why we have a special procedure as shown here and I'm just gonna copy the name here because we just want to make sure that the host name looks nice and per our standard and that is lowercase in this example so you see it's basically just one letter that changed but we have to go through this procedure um, we put in the new name and now we can click on rename and I think Matthias can shed a little light on what is happening next. Yeah, lots of things. Um, so CheckMK basically uh, scraps through all the, the historic values and all files, all databases and very cleanly replaces that host name with a new host name. And because it's a complex operation, uh, the monitoring has to be shut down during that procedure for a short time. Right. So you get the short monitoring downtime. Um, that's something you have to keep in mind. Also, it can take some time depending on how, how big your environment is. Right, exactly. But in the end, uh, you have everything in place as it should be, all the graphs, all the historic yes. data, everything where the name of the host was mentioned will be renamed yeah. to the new name. You basically come to a situation uh, that is if the host alre always had the name also in the past. You're basically changing so history here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. All okay. right. So now we can see um, we got the finishing screen. So everything is uh, done. You get the result. You can see everything that was done. You get the process info, a lot of information, which basically tells you it went as expected. Um, Maybe one noticeable thing, there are no pending changes here. So in this situation, as Matthias just said, um, the changes are activated in the process of renaming yeah. the host. So when you see this screen, everything is done and it is already in your um, running monitoring configuration. Yeah. And it goes very deep. As you can see, he even rebaked uh, the specific agent for that host. Right, exactly. So yeah, it's that's the reason why it's, it takes some time. It touches every every parts of the monitoring. Maybe another noticeable thing, if you think about it, there are no pending changes now. So if you want to rename a host, you cannot do that while you still have pending yes. changes because there you the process cannot ensure consistency and it would activate changes you might not want to activate yet. So yeah. before you start renaming, you want to make sure your changes are activated. Yeah, you need to get uh, into a clean state and yeah. 
that's basically it. All okay. right. But as we can see, uh, it's a lengthy operation. So if I have uh, a couple more holes to rename, um, right. I think we need another mechanism. We need something better, some, yeah. some bulk operation. And that's the next step to do. Right. So I'm just going to navigate back. You can see the host name has changed. Um, so I'm going to head back to the main folder. And we are going to the next example. So now, here we have an example with four hosts. Um, and as you already said, Matthias, uh, we want to um, do this in one batch. We don't want to rename every single host by itself because we already saw that takes a little time. With four hosts, it takes uh, quite more time, so we want to do it in one batch. Um, so in this case, um, we can directly navigate into the dialog and rename multiple hosts. Maybe you realized I didn't use a checkbox, so in this case, we are using all hosts in this folder, and I'm going to show you in a second why we don't need to make a selection um, prior to opening the dialog. Because here in this dialog, you have the host name matching, and this is uh, regular expression matching. Um, so here is where you can choose which host to rename. If you want to rename all the hosts, that's fine. You can leave it empty. The default is it will match everything. If you want to make further decisions what you want to rename, you could do that here, but you don't need the checkboxes. Anyway, for our first example, we make an e explicit renaming, so the selection is basically done by listing the hosts itself. Uh, right, exactly. Um, but later we will show an example where, where the matching is going to be interesting. Yeah, right. All right, so now I'm going to click on Add Renaming. You can see we can that do multiple times, and then we can select what method of renaming we want to choose. There's a whole lot. We will cover some of them later, but in this case, we want to do a simple explicit renaming and you can see here there's just two fields for that renaming you put in the current host name and you put in the new host name you want to give it yeah. and that's basically it all right so now we put in the first host name um, the first one was this server and uh, let's say the infrastructure team uh, decided to change uh, what the server servers do they changed the platform so in this case we want to name it like this so we know which operating system is running beneath it and that's basically a um, simple example and I'm just going to add the next hosts I'm just going to prepare it here we had four hosts Nope, this one was a Linux host. So, now we got everything in place. We have the original names, as you've seen before. Um, then we have the new names. You see it's completely freeform. You can choose whatever name you want there. There's no methodology behind it. It's just explicit. Simple enough. Press bulk rename. Right. We, we get a confirmation what is going to happen. So you can double check if that is what you want to do. And I'm just going to confirm, and then the rename yeah. drop is running. And basically, renaming four hosts lasts the same time as renaming one host here. Right. Because the, uh, the time is consumed uh, in stopping the monitoring, going through all files and stuff. So the actual number of hosts is not really relevant here. Exactly. Right. So now we see the operation was successful. Four hosts were renamed. It's the same dialog as before. So I'm just going to navigate back you can see the host names are as we intended them to be and now we are back on the top folder okay so next challenge we don't have four hosts we have uh, uh, say 100 hosts yeah and uh, we have systematic changes for example we want to add something at the beginning or drop something or change the case stuff like that right exactly and we don't want to do uh, 100 hosts yeah. explicitly because for four to five hosts that works quite well as we saw but if you um, have a certain amount of hosts, then that won't scale yeah. as well. So we want to do something more intelligent, more interesting here. More automation, always good. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so let's make the next example. Let's dive into the next example. So 
I didn't create a hundred hosts in advance because that would take some time too. So I just went with 10 hosts. We have 10 example hosts here. You can see Linux Windows. It's the same scheme again, but in the end, um, it will be the same result. So we actually want to drop this .com here and make it lowercase. That's right, yeah. exactly. Like the example before, we have the um, goal in mind, how the names uh, should look like, and we want to make sure they look properly. So again, we navigate to the rename multiple hosts dialog. We have the host name matching. We want to apply this to all the hosts. Ah, case translation. Right, that's already um, the right method we want to yeah. use, but we said we want to go to lowercase, so I'm going to select that here. Yes. Then we add another renaming, and here we have a nice little functionality that's called drop domain suffix. So you don't have to tell yeah. uh, CheckMK what exactly should be renamed. You just tell it to drop the domain suffix, and CheckMK knows that that means yeah. to drop everything behind the short name, and that's what's going to happen here. In this case, the, the order of the operations is actually irrelevant, uh, but if it's relevant, you can move around these operations with the arrows. For example, say you want first to drop the suffix and then make a case translation. Right, exactly, because right. there are com yeah. more complex examples where that matters which yeah. translation is done when, because the next one would be based on the first one, so that would be uh, important. In this example, it doesn't really matter, right? Okay, so go ahead. Let's. All right, so now we can click on bulk rename. We get the confirmation dialog that actually happens what we want it to happen. You see the domain part dropped and you see the case translation in the first letter. So I'm going to confirm this. We get the well-known dialog by now. Um, it's renaming the host in the background. And after a few or a few more seconds, this will be done and we can navigate back. Cool. What if it's even more complicated? For example, uh, let's say if you want to swap the order of the operating system and the application here. Instead of app Linux, you want to make Linux app or something like that. Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, I mean, some of you probably know regular expressions. Some of them might hate them. Some of them actually know how to use them. Just uh, th th we will use a really simple example um, how you can rename your hosts on with an even more powerful um, method. And if you don't know about regular expressions, this is a very good opportunity to learn them. They're really cool, they're really powerful. You find them in every place in CheckMK. Uh, in the user manual, uh, we have um, a page for that, an article. We will link that in the video description. And maybe we make some videos someday about regular expressions as well. Right, might be fun. <laughs> <laughs> they're so useful. All right, so for the last example, I have prepared 10 hosts again. This time you can see they are named differently. And this is what Matthias just mentioned. Now there is something more complex. We can't just drop some part of the name and there's not just a case translation. Yeah. In this situation, um, there's a little more, more to do or more to know. So we are going back into the dialog we already know. We want to rename multiple hosts, all of them, and we want to add a renaming. And here are all the renames you already know, some we didn't show. Um, and now comes the Swiss army knife, the regular expressions. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> so um, now we can choose, or now we need to uh, give CheckMK on the one hand uh, the regular expression, how it can find the hosts, and we need to give it the replacement, so how it should arrange this stuff. I think it would be easiest if I just put in the configuration and then we can explain what it does. So let's start with uh, with matching the first word, and we simply use dot star, which matches everything, uh, any any sequence of characters. Right. Then we have a dash. We match exactly one dash. Then another word. So it's dot star again. Another dash, and final dot star. So this matches everything that has two dashes in it. Right. At least two dashes. Exactly. So and uh, now comes the funny part with the, uh, the replacement. So um, uh, what we now need is some placeholder for these three words that we want to replace. Right, So exactly. the trick is grouping these three dot stars into brackets, and then you can refer to them. Right, exactly. So I'm just going to go ahead and put in the brackets. So as Matthias already explained, um, this is basically the first word group of the first group, and with the brackets we can mark that 
so we can use it in the next step as one distinct group. And that goes for the second and the third part too. So in the end, the expression looks like this. So we, we kind of catch uh, the words that have matched into, into boxes, into registers, and we can insert them with backslash one, backslash two, backslash three. Exactly, right. So, so we take these boxes we just created with the brackets and we rearrange them in the replacement yeah, section. Okay, so go ahead. Right, so this... Um, so we want, want the operating system name as first and this was in the last group, so we need to start with backslash three. Exactly, right. Then there's the dash again because yeah. that is not within this box we yes. are rearranging. Yeah. Now the next part would be the first matching group we already had. Which was the, the number. Right, exactly. And, and as the last, again, the dash as a separator, basically. The application. Yeah. And the application. That's it. So, so that's basically it. Let's try it out. And now we're going to go on bulk rename. And now you can nice. see we, we, we did it on the first try. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it worked on the first try. So uh, this is what we want to have, the rearrangement. So I'm just going to confirm this and get the job running. Yeah, let's go. Yeah, that's basically it. Right. Same procedure as uh, we already had. And I, I think you, you have seen that very complex renamings are possible. Um, so it's an opportunity to clean up uh, your mess in your host names, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you have even more things, if you have thousands of hosts uh, with very explicit renamings, you already, uh, of course, can use the API and write some script or something that's sure, yeah, the that last resort. There's a lot of more ways yeah. how one can do that, but in this uh, case, this is the starting point where you start and it's really powerful you can use it in a lot of scenarios. So thanks for watching and we see you again in the next video.